Hello, everybody. Um, we're live. Uh, I am uh, Verde Arbusto. This is the Schumann Resonance channel on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm hiding my timer so I don't get a glare from it. Um, uh, uh, Schumann Resonance Harmonics uh, channel on uh, Facebook and YouTube. I am Verte Arbusto. This is Tuesday, the 13th of October. I think we're still in the magical portal day. Um, and um, all right, so this is the next one in the series of videos about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, about uh, the, the, the pole shift. The imminent... Um, you know, we're riding the wave of a polar excursion right now, and and quite honestly, no one knows. You know, the, the planet probably knows, and so if you can listen to the planet tell you, you know, I have, and I sort of have an idea, but I'm, you know, what can I empirically prove? All right, so that's what this is about. The As I say, this is factually speaking, I'm a buck stops here kind of guy, you know, a fact stops here kind of guy. It's like, you know, I need to have it verified in, in paper and, you know, all right, to be able to prove it to, to, you know. So anything that I know that's a theory I can't prove, it's like, well, I just, you know, I know that from talking to the planet. Uh, you know, however, what do the scientists say? Well, that's why we're here to, to do this um, here, that, that you can know. Um, what they say with the with the, the the voice the scientific voices about you know a magnetic pole drift about the excursion about and about a pole shift a swap you know back and forth all right so this is what we're we're talking about and we're discussing here before I can get on to as I call it, the extra credit question of how this is going to affect the Schumann. You know, I really want to thoroughly address the issue of what is the pole shift, what's the, in, you know, what is all that that I just said. All right. So, um, all right. So what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So there's, before I can get into the, the, the basic text, there's this kind of prerequisite reading that I found out. Um, that I really wanted to go through. It's just quick. It's probably going to be the, this one video here because I get ten, 10 minutes to work with. All right. So the two phrases are uh, magnetohydrodynamics and the other one is uh, geodynamo. All right. So that's what our two, our two phrases here are. All right. So... Um, so I'm just going to read what it says here. We have a nice picture to go with the graphic. Yay. All right. So uh, magneto, um, this is a quote from Wikipedia. Magneto hydrodynamics, MHD, also magneto fluid dynamics or hydromagnetics is the study of the magnetic properties and behavior of electrically conducting fluids. Examples of such, and then it says electrical uh, resistivity and in its inverse. All right, all right. Examples of such magneto fluids include plasmas, liquid metals, salt water, and electrolytes. The term magneto hydrodynamics is derived from magneto, meaning magnetic field, hydro, meaning water, and dynamics, meaning movement. The field of MHD was initialized by uh, Hannes Alf, Alf of Venn. Okay. Uh, his full name is Hannes Olaf Gustava Alf Venn, a Swedish electrical engineer. Wow. For which he received the Nobel Prize in physics in 1970. The fundamental concept behind MHD is that magnetic fields can induce currents in a moving conductive field, which in turn polarizes the fluid and reciprocally changes the magnetic field itself. Okay. The set of equations that describes MHD are of combination to the Navier-Stokes equations of fluid dynamics and Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. These differential equations must be solved simultaneously, either analytically or numerically. Okay. 
And so they're giving you some kind of, um, and I'm not going to go into the history. Um, so they're giving you some, you know, us, some phrases we can look at, you know, and I kind of, I scrolled through them quickly. All right. So um, I would, I would urge you to go over there yourself. I'm leaving the link in the description. Okay. I'm introducing this for those who don't have time to look yourself. Hopefully I've read this clearly through. All right. So that is magnetohydrodynamics as the concept, our, our, pri our, our introductory to the introduction concept. All right. So the other one is dynamo theory. All right. So <clears throat> going to read to you what, what it says about dynamo theory. In physics, <clears throat> the dynamo theory proposes a mechanism by which a celestial body such as Earth or a star generates a magnetic field. The dynamo theory describes the process through which a rotating, convecting, and electrically conducting fluid can maintain a magnetic field over astronomical time scales. A dynamo is thought to be the source of the Earth's magnetic field and the magnetic fields of Mercury and the Jovian planets. Okay. In the history of the theory, I'll read the first paragraph of the history of the theory. When Wilbur, William Gilbert published De Mag Magnet in 1600, oh, that's interesting, he concluded that the Earth is magnetic and proposed the fir first hypothesis for the origin of his magnetism. Permanent magnetism, such as that found in Iode, Iode Stone in 1919, Joseph uh, Larmor proposed that a dynamo might be generating the field. However, even after he advanced his hypothesis, some prominent uh, scientists advanced alternative explanations. Einstein believed that there might be an asymmetric asymmetry between the charges of the electron and the proton so that the Earth's magnetic field would be produced by the entire Earth. The Nobel Prize winner, Patrick Blackard, did a series of experiments looking for a fundamental relationship between angular momentum and mimetic mo magnetic moment, but found none. Okay, so that's the history of dynamo theory. Right. Okay. So, with those basic understandings, we're ready to move on to the next part, which I won't be able to read the, the whole article to you um, in the time left, because i got like two minutes left in this whole thing. So, um, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to actually end this video short, I think, and then... Uh, um, because this was a prerequisite, this is not the whole thing. All right. So, um, thank you all for being here. I appreciate you taking the time and the effort to, you know, make it through this this material. Um, there's a lot of reading. You know, as you can see, I read. You know, if you dedicate time and effort to reading through what I do, you 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 you'll have a really good grasp on what this stuff is. And I do my best to distill it down to its constituent elements, its core elements, but there's a lot of, you know, you, you can only make it so non-scientific and non-technical up to the point that it, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's meaningless, you know, and this is somewhat technical stuff, so you really have to dedicate some time to, um, to, to, to reading. And I will point you in the direction, but I can't read for you. You need to, I already know this stuff, you know? So you as the the reader, and I'm I, yeah. There's certain specific people I'm even kind of addressing, not by name, who in the comments have you know we've talked about you know keeping it non scientific, and it's like well, if you think electromagnetic or you know radio frequency waves, if that's too scientific, then I can't reach through the void. It's basically what I said that if you can't wrap your head around electromagnetic frequencies and some of what these mode things mean and, and you know, even the b most basic stuff, that, but I'm, I, I am going to have a hard time getting through this.